Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Postmortem. Why take a closer look at a movie and spend a little time discussing things that are of interest to me. Not only how good the movie is, but if there's some other quality it brings to the table, spend a little time talking about it. And what I'm looking at today is The Cloverfield Paradox, which I just reviewed a few days ago on my YouTube channel. The Cloverfield Paradox is a fascinating movie. Again, I don't think it was as well written as it could have been, but it's a fascinating movie, particularly the, the underlying concept that the movie revolves around. And I'll explain why in a moment. There are three movies so far in the Cloverfield series. There's Cloverfield, which came out in 2008, which was essentially a found footage monster movie. I thought it was okay. Wasn't over impressed by it, but it was interesting. It wasn't terrible. I don't tend to like found footage movies in general, though, because they're sort of silly. Then came in 2016, Tin Cloverfield Lane, which I didn't see. But from what I've read, it's kind of a thriller about these people who are trapped in this fallout shelter with someone who may or may not be insane. And it was followed up by The Cloverfield Paradox in 2018, just a few weeks ago, in fact. And the concept that drives this series is that Cloverfield Paradox, which again came out this year, is actually the first film in the Cloverfield series. And you're probably thinking, that makes no sense. Cloverfield Paradox came out in 2018. It came out this year. Cloverfield came out 10 years ago. How is it possible that the Cloverfield Paradox is the first film? That literally makes no sense. And that's what's so brilliant about it. On the face of it, it doesn't make any sense. If you look, in, if you look at it deeper, though, it's perfect. It's the perfect concept. Keep in mind that Cloverfield, in 2008, it didn't have any explanation for the creature. None at all. Now, keep in mind, with Cloverfield, which came in 2008, the creature just appeared. There was no explanation why it was there. It, was, it just was, and it was wrecking havoc. From what I know of Tin Cloverfield Lane, the situation, and I don't want to speculate again. I haven't seen Tin Cloverfield Lane, though I have heard about it. The situation that happens in that movie just kind of happens. There's no explanation given as to why it happens. It just happens. So now let's go to the Cloverfield Paradox. Technically, the third movie in a series, actually the first, because it revolves around a space station named Cloverfield, because movie, and they're testing a particle accelerator to avert an energy crisis and war as a result of countries vying for energy. What the accelerator does is create holes, if you will, in reality. It transports the Cloverfield station itself to an alternate Earth. But at the same time, it opens up holes that things come through. This is the part of the Cloverfield Paradox that didn't work too well. The idea that the, the things that they saw on the station didn't make any sense, and it made the movie very much evocative of movies like Hellraiser and, in particular, Event Horizon. Though the concept works because the anomalies that the station caused not only appear in the present that the station existed in, but also throughout time. So in other words, despite the Cloverfield Paradox being the third film in a series, the creature that appeared in 2008's Cloverfield was due to the Paradox. In other words, it tore a rift in time and space. And that creature came through in 2008. 
I can't speak for anyone else, but that's pretty friggin' clever if you ask me. So all the Cloverfield movies then are all stemming from the seminal event of the space station testing the accelerator in 2018, yet making, yet touching on events that happened 10 years later in the case of Cloverfield and two years later in the case of 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now I don't know about you, that's pretty freaking brilliant. I think it's clever. And it's obviously a retcon because the makers of Cloverfield in 2008 likely had no idea they were going to make the Cloverfield Paradox in 2016. But they handled it so well. It doesn't feel like a retcon to me. It feels like a way to create a trilogy in a new and unexpected way that actually makes sense. This is why when I look at the Cloverfield Paradox, I wish it were a better movie than it ended up being. I mean, again, it's not bad, but it could have been so much better. And if it could have strengthened this concept underlying all the Cloverfield movies, it would have been incredible. As it stands, it's a great concept in search of a better movie. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Postmortem looking at The Cloverfield Paradox. Peace. <laughs>